This video is designed to help answer your questions about using the Air Check-In app. Air Check-In will allow you to report via your personal cell phone or other mobile device, and I'm going to show you how it works. You can use Air Check-In to report from any location that has internet access. It saves you time and money, and you don't have to arrange for childcare or take off work. That being said, once the app is downloaded, it's very important to report as directed by your supervisor. So if at any time you have any questions or you're having difficulty, make sure you contact them in a timely manner. So let's start with getting the app downloaded. You've got to make sure that the Apple App Store is available on your device. That's from where you're going to get the app. iOS version 9.3 or newer is required. If you're not sure what version you're running, go to Settings, General, and About to view that version. Wireless connectivity is required. It means you've got to have access to the internet. And then your supervisor is going to give you a username and password that you're going to use to log into the app. Remember, you can log into this app from multiple devices at the same time. So getting it downloaded, tap on the Apple App Store icon to open the store. You're going to type in the magnifying glass search section, Air Check-In. This is what you're looking for. Then tap on the install and enter your password. Make sure you also accept any permissions. Press the home screen and then once the app is downloaded, the install is complete and will appear. This is the air icon that should appear on your home screen. Tap that air icon and that will open the app. So if that air icon does not appear, again, go back and check what version you're running. 9.3 is required and sometimes older versions will not download that icon. So tap on the air check-in icon to open the app. Use your username and password given by your supervisor to log in and it'll take you to the home screen. Across the bottom you'll see a toolbar with access to home history, calendar, help, and more. So let's start with the home screen. The home screen is going to show you calendar items and check-in information. So a red item on the home screen is going to indicate that you have an unsubmitted check-in. It means you filled out the questionnaire properly, but for whatever reason, it couldn't get it uploaded to the server. So when you see this, take the device to an area where you've got good internet service, tap the red item to resubmit it, and you should be good to go. Pending check-ins are yellow. Pending check-ins are those that are waiting for you to fill it out waiting for you to complete them. And then ongoing or active calendar items are blue and upcoming meaning future or historical meaning past calendar items are white. When you tap history on the toolbar that's going to show you a list of your submitted check-ins with the most recent shown at the top. If it says the check-in has expired the questionnaire can no longer be completed and submitted. Your supervisor gives you a time frame to complete the questionnaire to complete that check-in. And when it says check-in expired, it means that time is over. So it may be a good idea to contact your supervisor and let them know why you missed a check-in so they can send you another one if necessary. When you tap on calendar, that's going to display your upcoming, your future events. Again, most recent shown at the top. Calendar items are entered by your supervisor. They could be meetings or when a fee is due, for example. Your supervisor can even set reminders to you of those events. Calendars are controlled completely by your supervisor. He, only he or she may add items or set those reminders. It's intended to be specific to your supervision. So this calendar cannot be synced with any other calendar you may currently be using. Those reminders, again, are scheduled in advance of an event. They're shown on the banner on the device home screen as well, on the check -in, as, well as on the check-in app's home screen. So if your device isn't silenced, you'll also hear a tone for that reminder. If you're using reminders or your agency requires it, make sure you stay logged into the app so you can actually get those reminders. When you tap Help on the toolbar, this gives you access to resource information that's been deemed useful by your supervisor. It could be community contact resources, uh, phone numbers for case managers, that sort of thing. And then it also displays your supervisor's contact information and their phone number. That's going to vary by agency. When you tap more on the toolbar, 
It shows you their profile about and logout information. Profile shows you participant information, username. It's got this uh, link to change password. It also shows the enrollment date and the date of release. That being said, make sure you fill out all your questionnaires, do your check-ins until your supervisor tells you that it's time to stop. About shows you version information. That's common anytime you download an app. And then you've got the option to log out. Notice the reminder tells you that you need to make sure all check-ins are submitted prior to logging out if you want to log out. Check the home screen for that red item. So let's actually look at completing a check-in since that's what this app is all about. So from the home screen, all you have to do is tap on that yellow check-in reminder. Answer all the questions and tap submit. It's really that easy. So the app first is going to notify you if you have any unanswered questions. If you did that on purpose, tap Submit anyway, or you can select Cancel to return to the questionnaire and answer any question you might have forgotten by mistake. Now the app does require a verification. This means that your supervisor wants to know that you're the person who's actually filling out this questionnaire. So you'll have one of at least the following, a PIN number required, signature photo, or fingerprint. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail on the next slide. Now once you hit Submit, Air check-in is going to show you that that check-in has been complete. Notice the banner across the bottom. And if you'd like to, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and check in history, that it shows that that check-in has been submitted successfully. So the verification methods, as I mentioned, there are four. There's a PIN number similar to an ATM. Enter four digits and tap on Submit. There's a signature. Just sign on the keypad, again, tap Submit. And then there's a photo. When you take the photo, if you don't like the photo, you can tap on X to uh, retake the photo. Then on the other side, there's a check mark where if you like the photo, that's the photo you want to submit, then tap Submit to um, accept it and submit it. And then finally, there's a fingerprint version. Just place the finger you use to register your phone on the reader and follow the instructions. Now, if required by your agency, the app will submit one GPS point when you submit your questionnaire. That's the only time the app is going to take a GPS point, and no other time will the app take a location. There are also prompts the app will send you asking for access to the device location, files, or photos, for example. Rest assured the app doesn't access any personal information on your phone. Those permissions are only required for the questionnaire submissions to work properly or for the phone links in the help section to work. For example, this is not a GPS tracking device and your supervisor is not pulling out any personal information from your phone. So in addition to a scheduled check-in, your supervisor may also send what we call an on-demand check-in, an unannounced check-in. So the app's going to send you a notification of that unannounced request which will include uh, the reminder on the banner, a tone, and a reminder in the app. If you're doing something that you absolutely cannot stop, you can tap on No to pen that request, or you can tap on Continue to go ahead and fill out that request. If you tap on No, make sure you complete the questionnaire before it expires. So let's actually look at this on a live screen. So this is a home screen with the Air app icon on it. When you tap to open the icon, you're going to see the home screen. And the home screen shows you there's a pending request and there's a couple calendar items there. There's the yellow pending request. When you tap on history, notice a, an expired check-in and a normal check-in right under it. There's all the submitted check-ins. There's your upcoming calendar events the help section with supervisor information as well as a phone link at the bottom and then the more section that's got that profile information where you can change your password and then the logout option so let's actually fill out a questionnaire go back to the home screen tap on that pending check-in it's going to load that questionnaire tap on where it says enter responses and it's going to give you appropriate choices, check the appropriate choice, check OK.
And then for questions that require a date or time, there's a date time picker where you can set the correct date and the correct time. Tap done, and then you're going to tap the submit button across the bottom. There's the verification method. It will vary by agency. This agency requires a PIN, so I'm going to select the PIN number. If I put the wrong number in by mistake, hit clear and re-enter that number. Once the PIN is correctly entered, tap submit. Now I've set up a fail situation here. Notice it's going to ask for permission. This is one of those permissions where you really need to accept it. I want this to fail because I want you to see a red check-in item. So as you notice, when I go back to the home screen, here's a red check-in item. So if you submit it and you get this, just go ahead and tap on that red item. It resubmitted it. It showed you on the bottom all of them have been sent in. And then when you go back to the history, you will see that that check-in was actually successfully submitted. So it is pretty simple to fill out that questionnaire. But at any time, if you have any questions about using the questionnaire or anything within the app, make sure you ask your supervisor. And if after viewing this video you're still not clear, please make sure to ask your supervisor any questions before you leave.